intro? Sure. Hey, guys. Thanks for uh, watching our, our safety video for the month of uh, October. Uh, this is becoming a regular thing, and we feel like it can be very beneficial. So please watch and listen and uh, even respond uh, to any three of us of any questions or comments that you might have, especially after watching these. Um, again, thank you for all that you do. And we will, uh, we'll just kind of move forward with what, uh, all three of us would like to talk about. Uh, who's starting us off again. I'll take it from here, Brian. Thank you. I would like to, hi guys. Uh, I'd like to start off with talking about proper procedures. Um, I think this is a important topic that we all need to talk about. You know, it's not just for oil. It goes for the lift gates, the hopper bottoms. Um, there is, you know, some procedures we need to follow to keep you safe. You know, I think we all want you to come home at the end of your shift and see your family without any injuries. You know, uh, I think we need to pay more attention to detail of what we're doing so we don't have spills or damage safes or, you know, uh, misalign the product when you're dumping it out of the hopper bottoms, you know, or contaminating uh, other oils. Um, if you need any help with these procedures, hey, just come in and talk to me and Brian and Skyler. We're more than happy to help at any time. Call us when you're out on the road if you need help. Uh, we all we all really need to help each other and, and kind of pick this up and tighten it up and I think, you know, overall, we're actually doing a pretty good job. Um, you know, me, you know, I want to see everybody come home. I want to see everybody make it home to their families, their wives, girlfriends, whatever. Uh, you know. I don't I have do any girlfriends. Go ahead. I don't have any girlfriends. Just a wife. Just a wife? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. One thing I'd like to ask, make, well, a challenge. I want each one driver to try to raise the bar on our standard standards. Just one, one little thing that'll help make it a little bit safer, help make us get it in and out of places a little bit better and quicker for drivers. And, you know, and put the, the double D stamp of, you know, a job well done on it. Skyder. Can I add some of that? Yeah. Uh, so I actually have this on my, on my uh, desk here, it says be 1% better each day. That's a thing from the coach of the British cycling team from two decades ago. It's how we made them win the Olympics. On this topic of finding a little ways to improve those procedures, we do have standard procedures, especially when it comes to the oil, because that's a dangerous product and, and you can get burned. We have procedures when it comes to unloading lift gates. We have things that we do on the hopper bottoms. There's... Maybe there's things on the sharp loads. There's a procedure there in the Samsara forms. And it is about the image that we're trying to portray as double D and making sure that people recognize our name that's accustomed to a certain type of service. And I think the way that that is really beneficial to everyone here who's, a, who's driving and doing whatever it is with it is this customer service that the company has created throughout the years. It's allowed us to have the relationships with our customers so that we can get access to these places a lot easier to get you in and out of places easier. Things like the big tanks at Geneva Rock being able to go in 24 seven, we have a key to their lock. And uh, other things like the lift gates, being able to schedule loads, move loads around as needed. That's from that service we've offered over the past couple of decades. And it's something we wanna to continue to promote and do. The end result is it always leads to us being able to keep trucks moving faster and less waiting. And so by, making sure when you show up and a hose is dirty and that's frustrating and it was dirty last time you got there, please do clean it up and let us know. We'll work with the people who left it dirty the first time so that eventually that service gets better and better. And if you're noticing other things about someone dropped this trailer in this way, it's as we're just working together and trying to help each other, uh, eventually we get to where we're um, all just kind of on the same page there and offering that service and, and the benefits will come from that. So I like the idea of raising the bar up a little bit, be 1% better each day. I think you'll see great results from that if you apply what Justin's mentioned there. I totally agree with that. I, I think I've, I've talked to a few guys about just even cleanliness at some of the plants we go to. And 
And it, it can be frustrating. I understand that. But at the same time, we got to make sure that we, we are doing the job that we should be doing also uh, before we even make those complaints or suggestions about, you know, the way others are leaving that stuff. And so whether it's a challenge or an invitation, I think it's it's a good one to be able to do that 1% better. I think we could all do that. And uh, I noticed that even just uh, driving the other day, um, pulling up to either to load at certain places or to unload at certain places and just, you know, trying to just clean one little section, whether it's on our equipment or someone else's equipment, uh, the loading facility or the unloading facility, just cleaning a little bit, trying to do that 1% each day. And I think if we could do that, like Skyler's talked about, you know, we'll be, we'll be, better, just more successful. One thing that we want a little bit better this time of year, moving on to another subject, is uh, your drive tires, your tires in general, coming into winter time. We try and do this about this time every year. Take a look at your drive tires. We've got Caden out in the shop going around and stabbing tires to report back to us which ones um, might need attention. But if you think your tires need attention, you know, we, we do have certain depths that we try and these ones will last through winter, these ones won't. But let us know. That could be helpful, especially if you haven't been to the yard for a bit. Just choose a picture of your tires. We'd like to make sure everyone's got good tires going into winter. And no need to have someone sliding around on the road in the in the winter time. So check your drive tires. Let us know if, if you have concerns there. I'd like to say something on the drive tires, but not drive tires. Uh, chains. It's getting to be that time of year. Let's, uh, you know, get our chains in order. If you need help, come by the shop. We'll get you some chains. If they're not there, we'll figure it out. Uh, as of October 1, you're required to carry chains into Montana. Um, I don't know if everybody knows that or not. And then the other states follow November 1st. Um, we need to carry chains in. Um and if you're wondering for a number, if you're going to, uh, Washington is the most strict. They require seven chains. So if you're running into those states at all, or you think you might, seven chains is how many you got to have with you. And also, too, with the, you know, with the winter coming on, uh, following distance. We have had one accident this year. Uh, no, it wasn't in the winter, but it happens. You know, when we're driving our commercial motor vehicles, you know, um, you know, the hop up guys and the, the freight guys, you know, you need to be about six to eight seconds, you know, in between you and the car in front of you. You know, the LCVs, the long combination guys, you know, doubles and and the uh, centipedes, you know, you should be leaving about 12 to 15 seconds. You know, now winter's coming on. You're probably going to want to leave a little bit more than 12 to 15 seconds. It's going to take a while to shut your truck down and, and, and try to make it to a safe spot. So, Justin, what would you say to someone who is trying to count seconds and uh, 12 is a lot of seconds and they can never get 12 seconds on I-15 between them and the car in front of them? What would you say to that person who's like, I can't get 12 seconds? I would say uh, do the best you possibly can. Keep it slow. Um, you know, try to always leave yourself an out is the big thing. You know, always look for that guy coming left or right to cut you off. That's the big thing I'm, I'm, I'm trying to focus on here is when you got to make that sudden stop. Uh, we've had another close call recently. And to this day, I don't know why that our driver did not hit that other truck. I have no idea. Um, but anyway, yeah, if you can't get the 12, get as much as you can, slow it down, and try to leave yourself an out. You know, if I, if I may, one of the things I've always tried to do is kind of realize and understand when there's those critical times while I'm driving down the road. Like, for example, like when I go into certain curves or – you know, I'm entering the city. Uh, there's some some things I'm trying to pay attention to, maybe a little more vigilant about, and and one of them would be following distance. And so I, you know, it, it, depending on where that is, um, I try to be more focused on what's happening out in front of me, and 
focused on a lot more of the vehicles out in front of me too and, and what they're doing and how they're reacting to other situations that are happening and so I try to picture okay when are these critical times <clears throat> that maybe my vigilance has to be a little more focused um, so that I don't get distracted from other things you know like like all the different distractions we've ever talked about inside and outside of the truck but but I wonder you know as I'm focusing on those type of things, I wonder, is my following distance? Because that then becomes the forefront of my mind as far as when I'm driving. So I wonder if as we're out there doing that, if uh, if we can pay attention, that that following distance triggers in our head as far as, well, okay, here's my spacing, here's the speed, here's what's going on around me. What is a safe space for me to be able to do or to be at uh, as, as vehicles are in front of me or as vehicles cut me off or you know, do whatever they do, how is, how am I going to react? So if I can think about that during these critical times and moments while I'm driving, I think, okay, falling distance is going to be the front of one of those, one of those things in front of my mind, as far as here's what I need to pay attention to. That's, that's good information, Brian. Uh, one thing I would also suggest is look a couple cars ahead, you know, see what's going on. Look up as far as ahead as you can in a big truck. We sit higher we can see a little bit further down the road than the average, you know, car or, or pickup. Um, you know, I don't want to be the dead, dead dog, but hey, cell phones, driving, following distance. Imagine all that coming into play. You're traveling 72 miles an hour, 65 miles an hour. You're coming up to a sudden stop or you're coming around a turn and all of a sudden traffic has stopped. Where's your attention? How much, how much time are you giving yourself to adjust for the, the realization come from your brain to your feet, you know, to, to break, you know, when you got a cell phone in your hand traveling 72 miles an hour and the car is a couple seconds ahead of you. I, me, I kind of picture my kids being in that car in front of me as I'm driving. Do I feel comfortable driving 72? Yeah, but what about the car in front of me? You know, think about your kids, think about somebody, you know, do I have enough time to stop my truck before I hit that car? You know, that's, that's the, the whole point of our following distance and it's considered aggressive driving and DOT has made it many things saying that they're going to be looking for aggressive drivers, especially in commercial motor vehicles. So Yeah. Brian, you got anything? Uh, no, not on following distance. That's good, I think. All right. Uh, one couple small reminders here. You know, I already touched on the cell phones. Um, hours of service. We've got to pay attention to what we're doing there. There's, you know, we're, we're, we're doing okay as a company, you know. Um, I have noticed some 16-hour short hauls. Um, the only way that you can use the 16 hour short haul rule is in the previous five days, you've stopped and started at the same spot and you're only going within a 150 air mile radius. If you have not started and stopped in the same place for the first previous five days, you do not qualify for the short haul rule exemption. Um, you know, it, if you're going to go into violation, give me a call. Give Brian a call, Skyler a call, something, so we can help you get out of the violation before it turns into a major violation. So the answer to that is don't. To your question, if you're going to go into violation, the answer is don't. Thank you. Yeah, you're right, Brian. Don't. Don't do it. And to your point that you continue to make there, Justin, it's oftentimes that when drivers call saying, hey, I've got this situation, we can look and say, you know what, there is a way to get what you need or some room there. Sometimes it is a matter of just moving some things around in the past on your log. And so certainly it's beneficial to check if you think you're going to run into a situation. Not always. Sometimes it's you're just out of time. But there, there's a number of times drivers reach out to me and we find ways to get a little bit of extra time that is easy to do sometimes. I hope everybody has a great month. Everybody comes home safe. Uh, 
let's do our loads. Let's get them delivered, get the miles, get the money. I wanted to add uh, some of these stats that I recently heard at a report at the Utah Motor Carrier uh, Board meeting, it or advisory board. I thought these stats were really interesting. So this is all the numbers through August of this year. In Utah, there's been a total of 43,228 crashes. 178 of those crashes were fatal. 30 of those fatal crashes involved a commercial motor vehicle. And so if you go through this, that means a crash happens in the state of Utah every like four hours is what the, the math breaks out to, which is surprising to think about. For some reason in my head, I just think there's like a crash or two a day uh, as I'm on my commute home, but the, that's a little bit more frequent. The fatal crashes, of course, are a really big one. When they reported on these statistics, we asked a follow-up question and said, of these crashes involving commercial motor vehicles, how many of them was the commercial motor vehicle at fault? And so I'm going to ask that question. What would be your guess if you think about that for a minute? What percentage of these crashes is the uh, CDL driver responsible? And the answer was 2%. So 98% of the time. You didn't give me a chance to answer. No, you, you had to answer in your head. Oh, I, I, I thought you wanted me to answer. Okay. So if you, you can tell me if you got it right or not, you can give yourself 100% or no percent if you got it right or wrong. I was going to guess eight. Yeah, that's 0% for you. Yes. You got it. I just wrong. I got it wrong. <laughs> I hope Justin would have gotten it right. I told him these statistics. So <laughs> hopefully, he, didn't answer. he yeah. should have answered. So he's wrong. I was wrong. I, I thought it was three. So two percent of the time, uh, this brings up a couple things. First off, you know that's that's good for commercial commercial motor vehicles. They're they're doing a good job being responsible. But what it also highlights is ninety eight percent of the time, if you're in an accident, it's because the four wheeler caused it. And so you bring up things like following distance or other distractions. Sure, there might be times where you're like, I'm in control. I've got this. But 98% of the time, it's someone else being out of control that could cause that crash. And so if there are anything, any things that are distracting you, then it just makes you more likely to fall into that 98 percentile. And maybe you're not at fault, but now you still got a, a big problem. And it could be, it could lead to a fatality in some cases. And so what that highlights for me is just the importance of always being ready for something is that uh, someone else is likely to make you crash and be careful about that. We have this video up in the hallway that Justin was referring to where Steve was just doing things just right. And someone just slams on the brakes right in front of them. And uh, somehow within inches, he didn't just plow into that truck. He did a good job of being aware, but if his mind was somewhere else. That truck was toast. And um, this is the stats in Utah. They also brought up the stats in Texas and in Texas, they have a crash Oh my gosh, I wish I could remember. Shoot, I should have asked them. The data is is unbelievable. It's something like they have a crash every few minutes in Texas. It was just nuts. And so these are Utah stats. You know, Utah is all over the board and what you think of their drivers, but there's a lot more places, a lot more density where crashes are a lot higher. And so as you're out across the country, uh, this just highlights the need for us to always be ready. And I also always thought it was kind of interesting about what those numbers are. They're, they're a lot bigger than what I would have thought. Anything else we need to cover? Not do it. Uh, just one quick thing uh, related to RMI. If you get the app and you pull the app up and it asks you for an access code, that access code is going to be on the home page when you log into RMI site. And it's going to be under the RMI Center mobile app section. And if, you know, a couple couple lines down, you'll see your access code and that's where you'll enter that in so that you can access the site on there or access the app on your phone. Um, so just watch for that. Um, and then in line with that is just uh, our insurance, the open enrollment that's going on right now too. If you have any questions about that, please let us know. And then uh, one other uh, little fun fact with a, a question in it is the, the major interstates in the United States, the ones that run from west to east, all end in zero. 
So if you're on an interstate, 80, 90, 70, 40, if you're going east to west, they all end at zero. The ones that run from north to south all end in five. This, these are the interstates, all end in the number five. So like 15, north to south, 25, north to south. Uh, the question I have, which one is the longest interstate in the United States? So figure it out. Let me know. Maybe there'll be a gift. Maybe there won't. I don't know. We'll see. At least it's a good little conversation we can have as we go. So if you don't know which direction you're on or going, get on a major interstate somewhere, and that'll tell you whether you're going north or south or east or west. Um, although only in that line. I don't know which you if you're if you're on an interstate and you're just going west and you think you're going east, then that's that's you have other problems there that we need to talk about. But for the most part, just something to think about, something fun. All right, uh, really answer. It's 215. It never ends. That is not a major interstate, though. See, that's the thing. That is a that is that's an interstate. Right. If you think about it, it, I think the the I don't know. The way they work that is because it ends in a 15, it's because it hits the 15 as it comes back. So it leaves 15 and then it comes back and hits 15. It'll end in 15. The two, I have no idea why the two comes from, but that's why it's 215. Makes sense, right? I'm confused. That makes sense. It, yeah, it makes perfect sense. Anyways, again, you guys, thank you. Thank you for being aware of your surroundings, for doing the job that we ask you to do. And, and a lot of you guys are above and beyond. And we really appreciate that. And, and uh, again, let's, let's be aware of our falling distance, cell phone use, our logs, uh, doing that 1% each and every day. And uh, I think we'll see some, some major improvements uh, as, we, as we continue to progress. Um, so... And we will, we will do the same here in the office. So again, thank you for all that you do. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate your help.